Hi, I'm Pastor Matt, the pastor at Christ the King Lutheran Church in Westchester, Ohio. Thank you so much for joining us for worship. On behalf of all of the people of Christ the King Lutheran Church, I would like to wish you a merry and blessed Christmas and a happy new year. Please be sure to visit our website at ctkluth.org for more information about our mission and our ministry and to find ways that you can join us in creatively bringing God's Word to life. Now I invite you to focus your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we experience worship together. As we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may you experience His grace, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor you have broken, as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, 
everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's time for our gospel interruption. I have with me a glow stick. These have been around for quite a while, and when I was a kid, I loved these for the hours upon hours of light that they would provide. But one of my favorite things that I loved was the snapping sound that they would make when you would break them. 
It's really a very satisfying sound. And that sound also means that light is going to come. So you can hear that snapping noise and shake it. And all of that light, that beautiful light appears. I think these are a great analogy for our gospel lesson today and for Christmas Eve. On a night in which nobody is expecting it, God breaks into the world to bring light. Emmanuel, come near to us. Jesus is born in a place that nobody expects. A simple manger in the city of Bethlehem. Born to bring light and life to the world. Snap. Jesus is born. God is present with us. And through Christ's birth, we learn about the life that we will receive and about the love that God has for all that God has created. It's a time for us to reflect and for us to celebrate and for us to shine the light of Christ with the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you have broken into our world to send Jesus near to us. Help us to open our eyes to the places where Jesus is present and give us the courage and the energy to join Jesus in ministry there. Help us to be the face of Christ for those who have not seen Jesus. and Help us to remember the greatest gift you have given to us, the gift of life through your Son. All this we ask in his name. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate 
as a shining example of God breaking into our lives in an unexpected way. Amen. Christmas is one of those times when people come to church and they want to hear the story. It's a story that people know many times, and so it's always a challenge for pastors every year to try and come up with something fresh and new and exciting. If you've heard something like this before, I apologize. It's new to me, of course. And I hope that every year as you hear this story of Christmas, it becomes new and fresh to you. An important thing about the story of Christmas is that it is our story. It's not just a story of something that happened long ago, but it's a story of here and now. A story of a God who loves us and breaks into our lives in an unexpected way to show us love and grace that we don't deserve. Think about what's happening in this story. There are shepherds who are sitting on the fields, minding their own business, when the angels show up, praising God, singing glory to God in the highest. And the shepherds don't say, Yay, there are angels! They fall on their faces because they are terrified. This is our story. When God shows up to us, it can be rather frightening. When we are face to face with a call from God, we can tend to run the other way, just like our friend Jonah did. Here are the angels challenging the shepherds, breaking into this world that is broken to share the good news that Christ is born. This story is your story and my story. It is our story. The story of humanity. Now, hopefully you have some good stories from the past, from your family, about Christmases and about other holiday celebrations that you like to share, that you'll sit around your Christmas meal and laugh and talk about and remember those people who were long gone. Like, I remember the time that my Grandpa and Grandma came to our house for Christmas and I was helping to unload the presents and I picked one up and he looked at me and he said, oh, don't drop that or you'll break the dishes. And I went, oh, no. And he said, see, I've spilled the beans. But it turned out that it was actually a VCR in there. It wasn't dishes at all. He was tricking me. These stories that we tell, they remind us of our own humanity. Some of the stories may not be good. Some of them may deal with our own brokenness. We have this vision of how the world is supposed to work at Christmas time. This gauzy, hazy, candlelit, beautiful, twinkly Christmas where everybody gets together and enjoys love and peace and hope and joy. But we all know that that's not how the world works. The world is broken. The world struggles with sin. All of us in our humanity have just as many stories about the time that we set out two tape recorders with Mahalia Jackson singing Go Tell It on the Mountain and put them at either end of the hallway to wake up our parents when one tape recorder would have done. So rather than hearing the glorious strains of a soulful version of Go Tell It on the Mountain, all my parents and grandparents heard was this jumble of noise that was not connected in any way, shape, or form. My dad got up and yelled at us to turn that stuff off. It was a less than happy beginning to Christmas, but it evened itself out. For every happy, hazy memory we have, we have memories of us in our own sinful brokenness in which we struggle to break through. But we have this story of Christmas that we cling to because it is a story of hope and of life. Without Christ coming into the world, the world is not saved. We are still enemies with God until Jesus shows up. Our story doesn't end at the manger. It only begins there. Our story journeys to the cross where in our brokenness and our humanity we witness Christ take on our sin and die on our behalf and rise again. 
The journey to the cross begins with the story of the manger and ends with the story of resurrection. God breaks into our world, a world of sin and brokenness, to show us love and light and life. The way that Jesus calls us into is a challenge for us. It's difficult. It's not easy. But it is a joy. And it gives us peace and hope as we are called to go into the world and love those people that God has made, some of whom are difficult to love, who are a challenge. But that's our story, yours and mine. Now, as we hear this story of the gospel of the birth of Christ, there are a lot of people who think, well, if only I had been there in Bethlehem, if only I had been near, I would have brought casseroles for Mary and Joseph. I would have rocked the baby. But funny enough, in, in our story, sometimes we miss when Jesus shows up. Even though the shepherds were in the fields and the angels were there, the rest of Bethlehem was in denial about who Jesus was and why Jesus showed up. And sometimes we have to have our eyes opened to the ways that Jesus continues to break into our lives, to challenge us to love. This story of Christmas is our story, yours and mine. We are there with the shepherds rejoicing. We are there at the manger, excitedly kneeling before the child. But it also calls us to be engaged in our world, too. To realize that Mary and Joseph will become refugees. They will be political refugees. King Herod will be hunting them down. We are called to see the face of Jesus on those who are refugees around us. It's much easier in abstract to love the Christ child in the manger, and it's much harder to let Scripture become the manger in which the Christ child is born, to challenge us to live out the gospel in the world, to love those who are on the margins. It's much easier to imagine ourselves as being loving and create this story like a Norman Rockwell painting of everything we do is wonderful and blessed. But to realize that the story of Christmas is a story of brokenness and a broken world that Christ comes to repair and to redeem. And in our brokenness, our selfishness, the Christ child is born, not to stay small, but to grow up and to challenge us to walk in his footsteps, to redeem us. That is our story, the great gift of love that God gives to us through this Christ child, calls us into action to love as we have first been loved, to live lives that just don't simply believe that the Christ child is born, that, but that will follow that Christ child to the cross and to the empty tomb, to do that difficult work of love. Now this time of year at Christmas, it's a little easier for us because everybody feels charitable. Nobody wants anyone to miss out on having a quote-unquote good Christmas. But December 26th, January 26th, February 26th, those are the times when the Christmas story is still calling us to love, calling us to live out this good word of the gospel, to follow the light that is given to us by Christ and to recognize those places where God continually breaks into our own lives to come near and to challenge us to love as we have been loved. This is the gift of this story, and this is its eternal challenge for us, to continue to follow the Christ child from the manger to the cross, to follow in his footsteps, rejoicing at the great gift we receive now and anticipating the gift of eternal life we know that is ours through the empty tomb. Christmas is our story, yours and mine. A story of God breaking in, offering us hope and life and light. And God continues to do that for us this Christmas and every day beyond Christmas. Amen.
And now may the peace which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. gathered together in the presence of God and one another. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, we thank you for the best gift of all this Christmas, your Son, Jesus. Open our eyes to the places which Jesus keeps breaking into. Help us to look upon the face of our neighbor and see your Son there. Motivate us to look past our own selfish interests and to serve others in your name, that through us they might experience Christ's unexpected presence in their life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, who is near us, Emmanuel, be present with all who are lonely this season all for whom this time of year is difficult. Help them to experience your closeness in their lives. Help us to be witnesses of your presence. Open our eyes to the needs of our neighbors and help us to share the joy, love, peace, and hope of this season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we ask for your healing presence among all who are suffering, those who are awaiting surgery, those who anxiously await treatment. Be present with those who continue to endure during this holiday season, those who await the coming of the new year with dread and with worry. Surround them with caregivers who have insight into their care Surround them with people who are knowledgeable and skilled that they may receive healing and comfort and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life and hope, be with all who grieve, all who mourn this Christmas, 
all for whom this time of year is a reminder of loss. Help us all to remember the saints who have gone before us, who have shown us the way that Jesus continues to surprise them in their lives and walked in his footsteps. Bless all of us as we continue our journey following all those saints who have gone before. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All of these prayers and the prayers of our hearts we lift up to you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The organ in the church was broken. And Joseph Moore and Franz Gruber scrambled for a Christmas Eve song that they could sing. One of the most beloved Christmas carols ever was written that night. I invite you to light a candle and sing along. Silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright Round yon virgin, mother and child Holy infant, so tender and mild Sleep in heavenly Peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake. At the sight, glory stream from heaven above. Heavenly hosts sing Alleluia. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light. Radiant beams from your holy face With the dawn of redeeming grace Jesus, Lord, at your birth Jesus, Lord, at your birth Thank you so much for joining us for worship this week. Please be sure to check out our Facebook page and to like us so that you can keep up to date with all of the exciting mission and ministry activities that are taking place in the new year. Now a challenge for you as you 
head out into the world this Christmas to open your eyes to the ways in which God keeps breaking in and challenging you. It can be scary and frightening, but it can also bring light and life and unexpected love. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and grant you peace. Go in peace and serve the Christ child. Thanks be to God. Stay.